What is up Wolfpack? Today we're going to be walking you through five survival skills that you will need to help keep you alive. Stick around to the end of the video because we're also going to be giving away a brand new SE4 to one lucky subscriber. We've already handed out five of these. One to Dan, one to Jeff, one to Travis, one to Toby. We're actually about to give away the fifth one today. So stick around to the end of the video to find out how you'll be able to win the best, I think, bang for the buck survival knife out there. It's the perfect combination of bushcrafting with this awesome finger choil as well as this quarter inch of steel so you can baton your way to wherever you need to go. So today we're going to walk through 10 survival skills that'll help keep you alive. And you know, oftentimes with YouTube, it's all about the gear. It's all about the coolest and latest fun new gear. But oftentimes the gear is actually just being used to offset the anxiety of the unknown. And oftentimes you're able to eliminate some of that anxiety by just simply able to up level your skills. And I think that the more you're able to up level your skills, the more that you're able to become an, a woodsman, an outdoorsman, a hunter, all of the things that are necessary for survival, um, the, the less likely you're going to feel the need to need to go out and buy the latest gadget and the latest knife and the latest thing. And so how can you cultivate a lifestyle around this stuff that number one is fun, number two allows you to continue to uplevel your skills, and then number three will help serve, uh, serve you in a survival situation should you know it. So let's walk through in no particular order and let's go through a couple of these things. So one of the, the, the first things that I think that everyone should really learn how to, how to do is actually how to properly start a fire. I think it's so critical and so many people are, are, are so reliant on their, their perfectly uh, dry tinder bundle, their perfectly functional um, fire steel, maybe even their Bic lighter, or sometimes they may even need to rely on some, some handicaps like these strike a fire tabs. I mean, they are great by the way, but if you've never started a fire in the middle of the Pacific Northwest when everything is damp and moist and you don't have anything but a Fresnel lens, um, I mean, the anxiety goes ramps way up. And so I know that it's not sexy, I know it's not fun, but I think it's one of the most important things is learning how to start a fire in any and all situations. Number two, learn how to dry fire. Right now there's an, an ammo shortage going on. And um, let me actually just, you know, do a safety check. You can see here, no mag, no everything. So dry firing, I think is one of the most critical. I think 10, 15 minutes of dry firing every single day is more beneficial than hitting the range every single weekend. And in fact, if you see here, this is my dedicated dry fire weapon. Um, it's Glock 19 with a Mantis X on it. This thing is phenomenal. It allows you to, uh, uh, to diagnose all of your idiosyncrasies in the way you fire and the way you grip. Even this one's the Mantis X 10, even in the way you draw your holster. And you can see here, I actually have um, some dedicated dry fire mags that I've, I've taped up and I never put ammo in this. And I, I also include these plastic snap caps. And the reason that I like the plastic, if you can see here, they actually chip away. And so the extractor sometimes fails to, to actually pull them out and it'll simulate a, uh, a lack of battery or sometimes even a double feed, which is extra tasty. And so if you never tried to clear a double feed, um, those, are, those are definitely fun. And so I'll take these to the range with me and I'll have my buddy intersperse them throughout our magazines. We'll, 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 take turns, um, we'll take turns loading each other's mags and throw these in there just to, to make sure that we're always ready to go. And if our weapon is out of battery, we immediately know how to, 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 to clear the malfunction and, uh, and be able to get back in battery. And so dry firing 10, 15 minutes a day will help you progress more in your firearm training than, than who knows how many times in the range. Now, granted, you should also supplement that. Um, I love taking those long weekend courses with certified instructors. I love hitting the range when possible, but it's not practice makes perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. And with the Mantis X, on there, it allows you to, uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, you don't even really need the Mantis X. Just being able to, to clear malfunction drills, dry fire, you don't need anything more than your firearm and making sure that you're safe and you are ready to go. And so dry firing is a great skill for you to learn. Um, hunting, the amount of times that I've gone out and gotten blanked on a dove hunt, a duck hunt, a hog hunt, a deer hunt, you don't realize how difficult hunting is until you've woken up at three in the morning, gotten all ready to go, driven three hours to the spot, waited multiple hours for daylight, and all to come home empty-handed. I mean, it, it, you want to talk about a humbling experience. 
It'll let you know that, hey, if there's ever a food shortage and you have to go out and drag your kill, it's not as easy as it looks even with a firearm. It gets you a new level of respect for those that have to go do uh, hunting with bow and arrow or primitive hunting back in the day. I mean, you come from a long line of hunters and gatherers and the fact that they had to do this back in the day without the weapons and, and tools that we are all blessed with um, shows to you that you come from a long line of warriors and for you to, to abandon those skills, I think is, is a disservice to them. And so making sure that you go out there and practice your hunting skills and recognize how difficult it is. Um, we talked about dry firing, but you know, I, I've, I've been, I've lived in, in rough neighborhoods. The amount of times that I've actually needed my firearm has been zero. The amount of times that I've actually engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat is way more than zero. And so get really good at hand-to-hand -hand combat because you're probably gonna use that a lot more than you'll probably end up ever needing your firearm. And so, um, you know, I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I train wrestling, I train Muay Thai, I train boxing. Um, you know, back before the Corona, every Saturday I'd be hitting open mat. And it, you know, it becomes very humbling when a 140 pound wet behind the ear kid that's really good at wrestling is having you face down in the mat. And you know, after multiple years, finally you understand what's going on and you understand just how difficult it is uh, to really, uh, against someone who knows what they're doing, to really win in a fight. Um, you know, the, the fact that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu allows you to go at 100% without major risk of injury. I mean, yeah, sure, you'll get, you know, maybe, maybe a busted lip here and there, but I, I think that the fact that you're able to practice every Saturday open hand combat, I think is one of the most phenomenal skills you can learn. And so go out there, learn some jujitsu. Don't be, don't be afraid. Find an institute that's, that, that practices wrestling, that practices takedowns, because you know, as, as much as you know, those, those tournament style jujitsu guys are great at jujitsu, they're terrible at taking to the ground. And so find one that's self-defense focused, find one that allows you to, to practice those skills and you will be in a much better situation. Um, you know, I've been in a lot of fist fights and I had zero ground skills. And so that's why I wanted to, to up level my ground skills. And so I went out and found a couple jujitsu schools, uh, ones in particular that were focused on self-defense and have been training for the last couple of years. And it's been phenomenal. And it's not, not only that, it's just a great way to stay in shape which is another bonus skill. I mean, do you have a kettlebell at home? Are you practicing? Are you, are you working out? Are you, are you getting 30 minutes of hard sweat? Are you getting your heart rate above 170 beats per minute multiple times a day or at least once per day? Um, what are you doing to stay in shape? I think is phenomenal. And I think it allows you to, uh, to really get that. And so that's a bonus one. Another bonus one, comms, you know, a ham radio. Um, this Bofang, $20. This was the internet before the internet. And I don't know if you'll remember after 9-11, none of the phone lines worked. Everybody, all, everyone was texting family. Everyone was texting friends. None of the phone lines worked. And so, you know, being able to have a ham radio, both me, my wife, and all my loved ones, we're all, we're all on the ham radio. I'm currently in the progress of getting certified. Um, but even without a certification, you can still, number one, listen listen into emergencies, but number two, you can use this in emergencies. And so, you know, right now I've got this, Elsewhere across the state. I've got this set up for, for weather right now, but having this, I mean, ha having a couple Bofang radios or just ham radios in general, I think is phenomenal and allows you to, uh, to stay in communication during a grid down or emergency situation. So get yourself some ham radio. Number two, get yourself some ham radio skills. Um, the next one, gardening. You know, um, Roots and Refuge is another phenomenal YouTube channel. She talked about like how she wished she didn't move it. She, she would have started before she moved into her homestead. Turn your waiting room into your classroom. And so she talked about like, hey, when she was in her apartment, she wished she would have been able to create like a windowsill garden, uh, do some stuff and under this, uh, like a, a countertop compost system, like what we have here. Um, the ability to learn how to garden and how to compost and how to grow your own food is such an underrated skill. And like hunting is a lot harder than it looks. Now this arrow garden makes it super easy, particularly with the grow anything pods. You know, we, we, we have, uh, you know, luckily some raised garden beds in the backyard. And so, the, you know, we're able to take what we start on our countertop and put them in the raised garden beds. But even if you didn't, even if you just stuck with the arrow garden, um, as well as maybe just a couple countertop um, planters, you're able to really elevate your game. This composter, we throw our coffee grinds, we throw our eggshells, we throw our scrap, our food scraps, and are able to make our own, our own very highly nutrient soil right on our countertop. 
And uh, you know, while we have a much larger compost in the backyard, this is really all you need to get started. And so you can start developing those skills. You don't need 10 acres. You don't need 20 acres. You don't need a full homestead in order to start to develop the, the key gardening skills that you'll, that'll be very translatable once you do finally move on to your compound. And so start, start developing your gardening skills and work on stuff that you'll probably end up using. The basils, the cilantros, the stuff that you're already incorporating in your everyday cooking. Why not grow that right on and have the freshest ingredients ready to go right from your countertop? Bushcraft. I think bushcraft is, is one of those mo most underutilized skills. Um, you know, this is a more knife. If you don't have one of these, these things are phenomenal. You know, right now, this is, this is my current project and I'm working on, you know, just some, some, uh, a fun little hobo, a hobo reel. And so this is a hobo reel. You can, you can throw a couple hooks, lines, sinkers, some fish hooks in here, cap, put the cap on. We're going to put some, some fishing line here in, in here, and you'll be able to toss this out and be able to, to be fishing ready to go. And so all you really needed is some, some filament line and some hooks, grab some, some grub nearby, and you'll be able to basically create a fishing reel that you can go fishing with. And so I'll be putting some bank line on here to create a nice handle. I'm continuing to carve this cap out so that'll be able to fit flush inside. And so you'll be able to do some, you know, simple, simple tasks like a hobo reel, but even more advanced tasks like setting up your own shelter. This book by Dave Canterbury is phenomenal. All you really need is a Mora knife and this Baco Laplander, and you could do all of the, all of the, the, the bushcrafting you really need is be ready to go. Uh, remember, stick around to the end of the video. We're gonna be giving this out soon, so, uh, so stick around. Um, so the bushcraft, this book by Dave Canterbury, I mean, it's phenomenal. Um, just pop it open and, and, and do a task every weekend, and over time, you'll continue to develop those skills. Speaking of skills, learn how to tie rope, you know, uh, the ability to create a nice solid line, you know, to, to be able to, to have this compacted, but the ability to, you know, create the, the knots needed for your shelter system will help you eliminate the overuse or the overneed for rope. You know, using this, uh, this SAS survival guide, you know, just pop it open to, your, to, the, to, the, to the rope section and be able to pick out, okay, let me work on one of these rope. Let me, let me work on one of these knots. You know, whether I'm joining two separate knots or I'm working on actually just creating my shelter knots, you know, whether I'm doing, I think, you know, just learning how to create um, solid knots will allow you to make sure that you're making, you're taking advantage of the, the limited cordage that you have when available. And so learn, learning how to do knots is another great survival skill that allow you to, uh, you know, to continue to, to, number one, just enjoy camping, which leads to the next survival skill. Actually go out and go camping, you know, become an outdoorsman. I, I personally love going camping. I love being able to disconnect from the outdoors, um, setting up my own shelter, setting up my own fire. And it's something I try to do uh, you know, I try to I try to get out there every weekend when the weather's nice. And so, actually going out there and getting some camping done, I think is just a phenomenal way to number one test out your gear, but number two, more importantly, test out your skills. And uh, can, could you get away without so much gear? I think is is a great way for you to find out. Hey, what's number one? What skills do I need to up level? Or number two, what gear is failing me and uh, allows me to upgrade? Carpentry, um, you know. This is, uh, you don't need anything super fancy. I'm still to this day using the cheapo Ryobi tools and they have yet to fail me and I'm upgrading where necessary. But for the most part, you know, I mean, you can see here this covered in sawdust. I just finished creating some, some raised garden beds uh, last weekend. And so this is some scrap, scrap wood that was left over from, from the framing. Um, some simple carpentry will really allow you to, to number one, be handy around the house and, and utilize the, uh, the resources that you have at hand. And so you're able to take care of that, that, that carpentry skills and really elevate, work on some small bushcraft, uh, some small carpentry crafts around the house, create some furniture, do some stuff that'll allow you to, to really get, uh, take advantage of your resources and not be so reliant on Amazon, Amazon two day shipping. So with that, I mean, those are, those are your 10 survival skills that are really take it to the next level with a couple extra bonuses. We talked about, you know, gardening and compost, which will allow you to grow your own food right on your, your own countertop. We talked about, you know, being able to start a fire. So that way you're never, you're never, fire is so critical. It allows you to have number one, shelter and warmth. Number two, it allows you to boil water when necessary. Number three, it's, it's a self-defense tool and helps keep you away from, from predatory animals in certain scenarios. 
uh, it's, it's, it, it is one of the most critical of all of the survival skills. And so learning how to do fire, open-handed skills, learning some jujitsu, learning some, some open-handed striking, learning some, uh, some wrestling will allow you to, to, to make sure that this is much more likely to be used than you know, utilizing your firearm. But if you did, make sure that your dry fire skills are up to par and that you're ready to go. Carpentry skills, are you creating your own raised garden beds? Are you creating your own furniture? Are you able to, to create the things that, uh, you know, that, that allow you to, you know, if you did move into a homestead, will allow you to take that to the next level. Um, sorry about that, that's one of my alarms. So that's um, carpentry. Camping, are you going out and actually utilizing your skills? Are you going out there and creating your own shelter? Um, are you going hunting? Um, if you've never been blanked before, and I've been blanked multiple times, you know how difficult hunting is. And so develop those skills now before you actually need it. Are you working on your, your not making? Are you working on your not making skills? Are you able to create a proper ridge line whenever you're setting up your, your, your shelter? Just because you've got a tarp and some cordage doesn't mean you can actually make a proper shelter. If you've never created, if you've never had to create a ridge line and set up a, uh, set up your tarp, in 30, 40 degree winds, which I have while it was raining. Uh, there's nothing worse than having to worry about your tarp falling apart in the middle of a rainstorm. Um, then, you know, just setting up all of those, uh, all of those things. Some bonuses, are you working, worrying about your, your communication? Are you going out and getting your, your, uh, your ham radio license? All of these skills will continue to supplement the gear that you have and I'll allow you to get to take things to the next level and not be so reliant on gear and know that, hey, if all I had was a knife, uh, an SE4, one that you may have won on the Wolf in Progress channel, if all I had was this and I walked into the woods, I would have a way higher chance of survival than if I didn't have these skills. So um, I'm hoping you're working on this stuff. I mean, this stuff is fun. Make it part of your hobby. Make it part of your weekend. Go out and go camping. Enjoy time with the family. Uh, you know, instead of immediately rushing to Amazon and going and buying the latest thing, could you end up going and creating and making it with the spare two by fours that you have in your garage? Instead of being so reliant on the, the very fragile food supply system, could you go out and actually create your own, your own food right on your own countertop? Uh, so work on these skills, pick up some books, actually read and work on work on these things. And uh, that way you're not so reliant on, hey, if there's an ammo shortage, you're still able to get your training in. All right. So um, with that, really appreciate you all sticking around. We're going to be giving away one more brand new SC4. Uh, this is going to be a 4,000 subscriber giveaway. So if we have yet to hit 4,000 subscribers, all you got to do is leave a comment subscribe and you're instantly entered whether it's in this video or any of my historical videos you'll be instantly entered to win a brand new sc4 we'll be sending this out we've already handed out a bunch dan jeff travis toby big ups to all of you um, looking forward to sending out more of these this is a phenomenal knife if you also wanted to give me a thumbs up that'll help it increase our rankings in the algorithm so we can hit 4,000 subscribers sooner so we can send this to you sooner and then the last thing this is super important turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the actual giveaway i'd hate for you to miss out uh, if you did end up winning this particular knife so four things leave a comment subscribe give me a thumbs up and turn on notifications um, you really only need to leave the comment and subscribe to be entered but the other two will help make sure that you find out about this sooner faster and stronger Thanks again. Really looking forward to sending this out. Oh, by the way, if we're already above 4,000 subscribers, no worries. Watch one of the most recent videos. We'll probably be doing another giveaway. And so check out the most recent videos if, you've, if you're watching this after we've hit 4,000 subscribers. Really looking forward to sending this out to you. We wouldn't be anything without, without the community. Leave a comment. Is there anything that I missed here? Is there any other skills that we could be working on? Leave your own experience. The comments are sometimes more important than the video themselves. And I know me personally, I love the comments. I love, that's one of the things that makes YouTube so great is the community. And so leave your comments below and really looking forward to hearing from them. I'm really looking forward to sending this out. Thanks everyone. Cheers.